Well met, lords and ladies. Jacob Butter speaking in a warm, warm welcome to this week's Walking Wednesday. I'm expecting there to be a lot of rain sometime soon. I could already have a bit of drizzle. I was warned about the rain going out. I'm supposed to start this a little bit earlier, but uh, I ignored that warning because I wanted to give myself time to gather up enough context to discuss what I'm talking about today. And not like I didn't have enough context to begin with, arguably I have more than most because I was there for a few of the incidents in question. But in order to really go through and, and essentially explain why I decided to make this video in the first place, I have to um, give, I have to say like everything from the beginning basically talk about my experience in Maniac Studios, or as it was named before, Team Mania, and to discuss what exactly, um, what exactly happened, or as fake as I can be, between Mania and the other guy. Which, by the way, disclosure before I, I carry on, I'm not the guy that Lady Mania mentioned in the most recent video. Well, not most recent, actually. It's two days ago now. Um, that she posted. I'm not the one who's mentioned in there. I was there around the incident, yes. But the, the references there, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, this is why I did so-and-so. But, uh, so just, just to clarify, because I know that the way that I've uh, that I framed this, because I was going to call this video Dear Mania, I'm Sorry, or something along those lines. But I realized that that would kind of imply that I was the one responsible for the fallout. And yeah, no, I didn't want people to think, oh, that's, uh, I'm just being baited in only to find out this is from a third party perspective. So I decided against that title. I don't know what I'm going to call this video yet, but we'll, we'll work it out. As Mania said, this needs to be addressed. Which I was surprised about, because I haven't thought about the incidents and how everything went down properly for about three years. I mentioned it vaguely in my review um, and comparison of Mystic Hill's Episode 1 Original versus Remake about a week before. Many went public with the information because I thought the topic was dead in the water. I thought that that was an anecdote that happened three years ago and the two of them parted in good terms. As I would find out later, that is not the case. But for now, uh, allow me to paint you a picture of my experience and my witnessing of the fallout within Maniac Studios. So, Going back to about 2018, is I, I was I was watching either it was um, either actually ah dang it I've started that sentence already I was watching a My Street video I try not to mention Afmal and Mania in the same sentence on purpose I was watching a My Street video but um, and uh, or I was watching a Moon Tea reaction. At the time, those were two of my main things that I would watch on all of YouTube. And it turns out, in the recommended section, was a different Minecraft roleplay called Mystic Hills. And, uh, yeah, I thought, okay, this is a different thing. I don't watch too many of the new style of Minecraft roleplays, or things that have come out fairly recently. Because my, my Minecraft roleplay origin really goes back to, honestly, like, honestly, you know, 2013, I think, you know, with the original run of Tale of Kingdoms, Legend of Hoodie, things by Paul Soros Jr. And then eventually, once, uh, once he who shall not be named, Sky Does Minecraft, started doing, uh, doing them, I was already subscribed at the time, so I watched there, and then the collabs with Afmal happened, and the big thank you video to Afmal, which led me to Afmal, which then led me to Mania. Um, and uh, 
yeah, as I, as I mentioned in the review, I watched the original Mystic Hills video, and it was it was great. It was it was intriguing. It was minimalistic. Could have done with a bit more background music or something along those lines. But there was there was actual character. There seemed to be an underlying story and a plan going forward. Unfortunately enough, there were more episodes that were available. So for a while, I was watching the whole of Mystic Hills season one and that was just a fun time i was just one of those many many observers watching the meteoric rise of one lady mania for the first time and uh eventually before mystic hill season two happened almost what almost the unthinkable for me occurred mania posted a video um asking people to apply to become voice actors. Not necessarily through Casting Call Club, as I believe is the custom for her to do nowadays, but by filling in a form and mentioning what characters you want to play and such. Now, I end up filling in that form because, of course, I had been, um, I had been to get into voice acting for some time. Well, I mean, I'd, I technically voice acted five years prior in a podcast, but that was it. My one audition was a terrible Ten Shinhan for Master Comex's Dragon Ball r and which was never going to be picked, but would at least give me a bit of experience. <laughs> and it did. But yeah, Mania was the first successful audition I did, because we, we talked about it for a while. I, got a, I left my Discord, so we talked for the first time about it, and then Mania said I got the part of Ian who was the first character that I filled in the sheet for. I was going to basically apply for any of them because they didn't have concrete voices, so technically speaking, I could have been any of them. And but then, um, but then I guess that was that I missed that chance. Then again, it seems that because of, because of shortage of staff, essentially, this guy, this guy named Jesus, his name is actually, actually Jesus, uh, end up getting four different parts. I was like, oh, well, dang it. And Ian over here has, uh, has no lines and such, which started the running joke between Mania and myself about Ian having no lines. Similarly to how, to how uh, Dylan complains to me about Terry not having any lines in The Mutant Girl. Just kind of pass the, the torch on that one. But either way, I was, I, I was able to voice Ian in a couple of occasions, and in fact, I, uh, I kind of, I kind of uh, wedged myself into the Christmas special, which started to be Ian's shining moment, because he was the narrator, he was the one who hosted that place, and uh, yeah, then eventually, eventually I made a video talking about the differences between Mania's content and Athmau's, because that was a running issue. And uh, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to come to May's defense here. I'm going to look at this objectively and see what counts as references, what counts as very blatant, and what is just being exaggerated. And that was that. Mania ended up actually uh, liking that video and uh, <laughs> enjoying that. And uh, yeah, then that was the end of 2018. And... That's kind of when that's kind of when things took a turn for me at least, because around that time, of course, you know, 2018 was over. Eventually, I would start, in, you know, in 2019, because you know Ian had no lines, to plan out my own path. Eventually, going back to Athmau, she was posting those um those gacha parodies that she did which made me realize wait gacha has the capacity to make people have you use animated mouths and also to have you know running animations and all that stuff huh this could actually be a viable path for me because you know i'm not exactly i could have attempted more minecraft role plays but i don't have enough people around to be to uh, round up for a team to actually be there in the moment. 
at least not then, and I was uh, getting more accustomed to Gacha itself. I was already familiar with it, thanks to Jay and Natasha. And so I made the transition to Gacha stuff. I've already had a couple of videos of Gacha, and again, so did Mania, actually. But yeah, it was around that time when, when the first episode of The Mutant Girl came out, then a month later, Buttercorp was founded, and the plans for the Butterverse at large actually emerged that early. So that meant that I actually, because of all those things, I ended up distancing myself from Mania to pursue my own endeavors. And, and that was that. Was that. And, and we kind of stayed that way. It's a bit, uh, unfortunately, far more estranged than I would have liked just because, you know, that became my main thing because the Mutant Girl first video did so well and, and, uh, and inspired so much both of me as a writer and for, you know, people arranging in the team and everything. I got caught up with that and the time from Team Mania, as it was known back then, uh, it seemed to be, uh, be drifting away. Alas. And that was until, um, I think it was, I've checked the dates of this. It was February 2020. And this is where the incident with the guy started to take head. Because while I was off developing the Mutant Girl, Buttercorp, and all, all of those things, um, Mania was still working on seasons two and three of Mystic Hills. I don't recall exactly what time that was because unfortunately I stopped watching Mania's content around that time, which may have been a sign because something felt off for me from the beginning. I don't exactly know why that was. Well, actually I did find out later because I actually talked to Mania about this ages ago. Well, as you mentioned, Mystic Hill started off as a kind of uh, high school drama, and then eventually, ironically enough, once the Mystics showed up, it became a very different show. And uh, that was that was sort of when, it, ironically, yeah, it was when I, I was started, when anyone started voicing in them in general, that I drifted away. Not because I think it gets mania, just because I guess I felt something was off and... It was no longer as engaging to me as I thought it was originally. Which is clearly not the case for a bunch of other people. I'm not saying that it's objectively worse or anything. It just wasn't my thing anymore. And clearly it wasn't Mania's thing anymore. Because, but, and that coincided with the guy in question coming in um, and apparently originally as an editor. Uh, in Mania's recent video, this needs to be addressed, the two days ago video, <clears throat> she said that the guy originally came in as an editor, and and then um, and then eventually started pitching in some other ideas for the show, and until eventually there were full-on co-writers, and this is the first uh, this is the first point of contention because I. Before I made this video, again, because I was checking, it's clearly starting to rain now, but uh, it was worth it. I checked on the guy's channel, because obviously Mania doesn't name him, but obviously I knew who he was, so I checked his channel. And the video that he made right after leaving Maniac Studios actually stated that Mania's apparently too stubborn to let other people edit. So, who knows, maybe while I was misremembering what happened, maybe it was the case that he originally showed up as an editor and and once it became clear that Mania was too perfectionist to um, to make that worthwhile, he switched his focus. I don't know. One of those things. I don't think either of them is outright lying. I think just one of them might be misremembering. I'm not sure. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that started and then of course the show took a dramatic turn. Uh, again, for better or worse, is up to one's personal judgment. I personally think for worse, but again, I've already gone over that. And yeah, um, uh, so so that tension was going on 
Uh, obviously, I wasn't privy to that at the moment because that was very much behind the scenes between them. And and then I um, I was actually an announcement came forward on the what on the now renamed Maniac Studios server, which I'd been in all that time. I never actually left production because you know. I'm technically still and always have been Ian. Um, and um, yeah, so that's so that ended up happening. Um, and the, inv- the invitation was to join Yandere High School, as in, as in the Yandere High School uh, inspired by, I think it was It's Funny, which is interesting because it's different to the one from a year later that Polar Bear did as a follow-up to the Sam Gladiator Yandere High School. So yeah, very common trend and it seemed to do pretty well. Um, but yeah, so I was invited to join that, those sessions and I thought, you know what, it's been long enough and quite honestly I'd like to give something back to Mania who started me off on the journey of online voice acting and 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 actually gave me my first taste of, you know, working within a team, which then, of course, informed a lot of Buttercorp and everything. And not to mention, of course, just the memories of actually recording together, doing a few of the mini-games where I wasn't bullies too harshly, in character, mind you. Um, So I thought, you know what, I'm give something back. I want to play someone different. I didn't play Ian during that. I wanted to do something that was... I wanted to prove that I was more versatile. This is around the time... This is before I started auditioning for, you know, everything because, there, because the Gacha Voice Acting Community kind of took off the following, like, a few months later. It was around the time that I was trying to prove that I was, I was more versatile as an actor because every role that I was kind of landing around that time for Minecraft voice acting, it was always for, you know, very, very posh well-spoken characters that sound kind of like me under normal circumstances. So, just bearing that in mind, um, I thought, well, okay, I'll do something that's com- the completely different. Almost the complete opposite to that. Um, so, yeah, it was a really fun opportunity to do that kind of thing. And yeah, once again, I ended up being the bully's character, probably because I was the happy-go-lucky one in the room full of incredible incredible edge and teenage hormones but uh that's beside the point um so so yeah that was it was we were poised to begin that and those sessions were were going along fairly you know they were all right at first but overall as i look back on that experience um i i do I do have to say that unfor- this is unfortunate, but that recording session, those, though, that whole experience within that recording space was the... Yeah, hold on. Cars. Yeah, that recording space was the worst recording experience collectively that I have had in the almost 10 years that I have been doing YouTube for. And part of that does fall on a management level. Um, it was unfortunate that, uh, that the uh, recording sessions happened to take place uh, like well after I was supposed to I was supposed to be in bed and I had actual things to do the next day. I was on a different time zone, so of course I was going to be the most affected by that. That was I was expecting that. Again, around this time was, you know, season one of the, of the Mutant Girl had already wrapped up by this point, so I was more than aware of, you know, how much it takes to manage people that are, like, overseas or trying to find time to even direct people in voice calls and such. But no, this was a case where we had to be all there in situ and improvising the whole way through. It was a great idea, just the execution, because that involved everyone being there and they couldn't be replaced. And 
there were some people who had very specific things that were supposed to happen in that one episode and then they would end up just not showing up to that specific thing. Um, and, there, and we'd be waiting there for hours for like one or two people to finally show up. Now, in the case of some other people, they were able to, you know, work on some more builds and stuff. But again, I had largely left the inner circle, so to speak, by this point. So I was completely out of the loop. I'm not a, I'm not a builder, and I didn't know what most of the behind-the-scenes plans were. I was content to find that out because it would actually really help with the performance as the character, which I will put a pin on that and come back to that in a second. The, um, that, but, but yeah, the sessions themselves were really massively delayed. There would be a few scenes. I had to try and pretend I was like super enthusiastic whilst late at night. In fact, there was one walking Wednesday that I remember where, or where I had to post a letter like the following day, like I actually go to the post office. So I had to leave early with zero sleep. Like, I don't even mean that I, you know, I got to bed late or, like, woke up, you know, at YouTuber times or stuff like that. No, I got zero sleep that particular night. And then I had walking as to record. And thank goodness that Wednesday was the day off. That um, there, were, there were no timetabled sessions at that university for my year group on Wednesday. So... We're supposed to use that day to, uh, that they, you know, do our independent studies, to do our, our coursework and all those things. I used it to recover my body. So, yeah, so even, even I, even I, the person who is notorious for streaming almost every night at 10 p.m. And, try, and, and, you know, not they're getting dinner really late and going to sleep late and always working into the hours of the night and whatever, even I have my limits. And that series, unfortunately, was where that, where that, that, that lay for me. I'm gonna end up, this, this thing is gonna cut in a few seconds before I, it goes to the next recording session. Oh, there it is. See, I knew it. Okay. So, where was I? Um. Yeah, I, I stuck through those sessions. And yeah, not everything was bad. Um, but this is where I kind of I, I go back and uh, discuss the things that uh, the guy mentioned in his Fallout video, which came out like right after the incident. It wasn't the three years later report that Mania did, which I will go over why it was three years late in a second. Uh, yeah, in, in his one, he, he mentions how he, he woke up late that day. He was late to export his own video. I do recall that he had a bad internet connection, which meant that YouTube videos exporting for him took a long time. And I am going to take a wild guess and say that, um, that he... Um, that he couldn't, he couldn't have both Minecraft and YouTube running at the same time, otherwise they would both crash. In fact, I may have suggested that myself at the time. Um, I, I vaguely recall as well that, um, that Mania was actually, um, actually saving up to get him a new PC set. I might be misremembering that, don't quote me on that, but I think that was something that was brought up. That, um, that might have happened so and that would have been the reason because his setup was was so bad that it meant that he couldn't export his own videos and also come to support manius and this is where i kind of understood where he was coming this is where i was where being there i was privy to what was going on for the first time and so yeah i kind of i, I kind of thought to myself around this point Okay, I see what you mean because, you know, I myself have a bunch of other YouTube projects that I would like to take part in. And if, you know, but then, considering that I was also in a managing position, um, I understand that, well, even more so nowadays, considering the fallout with all the editors and the voice actors and 
how much the team has grown. I understand that when somebody has their own has their own things to do, I mean, you've got to have let them do it, but also at the same time, it does feel bad when you're not there. So I didn't want to put Mania through that. Um, yeah, but so I understood him waiting for that video. I, of course, wasn't too sympathetic because it meant that I was, you know, staying awake way later than I should have been. Uh, I don't think it was the that I don't think it was the same meeting where I was like awake and I got zero sleep, but uh, definitely at most I got two hours that night. Either way, um, so he he had that he had that issue. Then he came in and we obviously we we, we complained. We asked, um, "Hey, what the heck is going on?" And then of course he got quite mad. And I think I was prepared. I was prepped for that. Um, Mania and I believe Ish had mentioned this. Um, they mentioned how there was there was tension going on. I can't remember what they said specifically. Again, three years ago, but it was it was quite it was, it was clear that the interactions between them were getting more and more verbose as time went on. Gonna change go back. Um, and I think that might have been when Mania told me a lot of the stuff that she is like now announced publicly. Um, that the, the Mystic Hills writing um, was not as fun anymore because and um, and that the ideas being clashed were that that was getting harder and harder to handle and how much how much the guy might have actually taken a few of those things personally which lines up with what mania said about um about him mentioning that he said oh he claimed mystic hills was was his right thing this part of course is hearsay because uh, we don't i don't because mania didn't share any any captions in a video neither of them shared any captions uh and obviously, I don't have access to them because Walking Wednesday is an unedited format by its very nature. Um, apart from singing these clips together, of course. But um, but yeah, while that, while this was going this was going on, it seems that May was unhappy with the direction Mr. Kills had taken. It's supposed to be a high school drama and everything. And you know, I understand when you know great art of course, is formed by compromise. I've always said that. Um, and people, when people can come together and, you know, have different visions, they can propel the series forward, which I think was how it started out. A different perspective. Many liked a few of the new refreshing ideas until such a point where she didn't anymore. And yet, yeah, so, but of course, once the entire, once the entire genre or essence of the series is lost, according to the creator of said series, the one who who had the original idea, who had that first spark, that's when it becomes... It, it becomes way worse. Sorry, I keep getting things in my shoes. That's, that, that's when it becomes a case of, okay, there's a, there's a certain person who whose channel this project is on, who had the idea, who was in charge of writing, who did the first season, and that's the case. You have to be able to say no. And the same thing, uh, the same thing kind of happened to me at one point um, that uh, I mentioned to before that a few of the Mutant Girl a mu the episodes, well, three of them actually, starting season two, were written by Shiny who originally proposed the idea of, of well, making more Mutant Girl in the first place past season one. I didn't have any plans going forward to continue it. Because I thought, okay, well, I've kind of, I've kind of wrapped this up. We can leave this open-ended. Or we could continue. That will work too. You know, do some, or do something else. I wasn't particularly concerned either way. Um... But yeah, Shani proposed the idea to do a, um, a, a camping mini-arc or something, and then eventually, as I 
thought of more ideas about how you know someone could get kidnapped or something or a few more aspects of the mutant uh side of things like the science side of things would come into play it got me thinking because that's one aspect that i i regretted not putting more of in season one because you know i mentioned dr daniels by name once and yet she doesn't have any lines until a spin-off that was suggested by somebody else in fact i think she still hasn't spoken at all in the main mutant girl series so I regret not putting more science into, into that aspect, more mutation into the mutant girl. So it was a good chance for me then to think, okay, season two, how would that go down? So, uh, so that's why season two existed. And because Shiny proposed that, I said, okay, well, let's, let's write it together. And so that was fine for a while until Shiny uh, got fired for the... Uh, until Shani got fired from Buttercourt, and I think he was still just before his second firing. But I still kept him on as a writer because it was still part of his vision. I thought, okay, well, I don't want to just take that away from him. It became very clear that he would spend most of our writing sessions playing Skyrim, suggesting very few elements, which, um, which I only included because they were the only thing that he mentioned. Like, Marwick getting cranky because I had his coffee um, even though he is 13 years old um, was was his idea the the blatant uh, Agatha reading a book in Braille cracking it open for no reason and Judas going Braille so you're blind Agatha that was him I didn't like those but it's the only things that he suggested so I thought well okay just for the sake of that we'll put those in here and, uh, which, and then, after I removed him completely from Buttercorp, he actually started protesting, saying, you know, that I couldn't, I couldn't write more Mutant Girl without him, because now he was one of the writers, and he was responsible for the ownership of the show. Which, of course, is not how that stuff works, even in the real world. Most of the time, most of the time, the, uh, the, 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 the distributing companies are the ones who have the, the, rights to the series rather than the writers themselves. Sometimes it's not the case. In fact, you know, Disney's ever long, ever long quest to maintain the intellectual property was because Walt Disney was actually, was actually stiffed out of his, out of the copyright for Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And then once Mickey Mouse became, uh, entered the scene, you know, his copyright was so important that still to this day, you know, they tried to extend it so many times that it's now become there's that there's now it's now still in effect and copyright law has been changed forever because of that so yeah issues <laughs> but um so yeah his, his and he, he actually threatened to sue me he actually said i know my law i'm going to sue you for the mutant girl and that's gonna you're gonna end up losing the show he also deleted all of the uh the 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 script i then of course restored it because i can go to previous versions that's a google docs feature he deleted the entire google docs script that was there up to this point up into episode four i then pasted it into a different document that he didn't have access to and we just carried on from there which is why if anyone wonders why there's a, a thing called season two new that's the reason um yeah eventually shannon would patch things up but it was it very much you know reminded me of that particular instance um and then immediately after that aiden came along he was offering more suggestions like behind the scenes anyway shiny kept on trying to reject them because he wasn't he and aiden had never got along but um but yeah aiden came along and he actually started doing kind of the same thing this guy was doing with mania but not without the toxicity what i mean is he would be offering a bunch of suggestions that were kind of outlandish by this point, I already had a plan for all of season two. So he was, <laughs> that was an interesting thing that was said there. Um, so yeah, he um, experienced uh, a lot of uh, rejection from me because of that. And that's really what's important. That's why I kind of decided to try and make this video. Um, that's part of one of the reasons. 
And I'm glad that, you know, after all these years, Aiden, you know, he's never become possessive over the mutant girl. He's already, he's got his, his own show to do. Unfortunately, there was an incident with Taming the Bad Boy when, um, I've covered this in the previous Walking Wednesday, but in Taming the Bad Boy, when that was uh, getting a season two, um, Aiden was uh, offered to help with the writing with, with Shorty. I was also around there for a bit, but, you know, he and Shorty kind of, like, went off on their own and continued that process, so I... So, uh, so I came in as classic thing that Aiden does, you know, it's like now the script is mostly complete that he's done on his own, and he's just going through and offering a few... I'm going through and offering suggestions. As it turns out, of course, because the thing is that Shorty is far less assertive than I am. So, at the time... Aiden took over, well, he took over, essentially. He was offering a bunch of suggestions. There was the whole thing about Yuki being some sort of, like, prophesized demigod or something along those lines, rather than the archetype represented, which was, of course, you know, the, the submissive character that needs to grow a backbone and had nothing really too assertive about him in general. I don't know if he had wings. I think he had wings. I can't remember. But, yeah. So, that was why, uh, eventually, Shorty also lost interest. And when, and when the, uh, and when the, the time came and YouTube removed the It's Mimi Chan channel, the Taming the Bad Boy went along with it. And the season two was never... Kurt never finished, only had two episodes, which ironically were the ones that Shorty actually wrote by himself. Who knew? <laughs> and this is what could have happened with Mystic Hills. It could have been that, yes, Maniac admitted to rushing the ending of season three just to get it over with. But but she could have just been like, I don't know, I don't like this anymore. Let's end it. But she stuck through, which I respect a lot. And that's why I also stuck through those Yandere sessions, despite the fact that eventually, uh, going back to that for a second, I was then called onto. Um, I was I was then told that I, my character was the Yandere the whole time, without my knowledge. I was like, well, no one knows who the Yandere is at first. It's like, okay, that's fine. I thought that meant no one other than the person who was involved, and this is when. Uh, there was a lot of like backlash towards me. I was complaining that I was being told that I was the Yandere post hoc because my entire motivation and character was not supportive of that. And this is where I think, yeah, particularly Ish was very argumentative about that and how I should be, uh, and how I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't be getting mad. This is part of the deal, you know. You know, you, you have no right to complain. Maybe be more respectful. I can't remember exactly what was said. Um, and yeah, people let to Mania's defense, which, you know, kind of. Which then afterwards, um, after that whole last session, because it turns out that was a lie in the first place, I think even the guy himself pulled me aside and said, You're not even the Yandere. It was like, Well, then what was the point of that whole lying thing? I still, I never got an apology for that. I still think that I would, you know, that, w that would have actually been nice on behalf of a few people who would have been way too proud to do anything about that. Mania herself um, didn't seem to be saying too much. Again, I feel like Mania doesn't like confrontation, which is why this incident sort of happened in the first place. And I think the guy kind of knew that, because if it is true that he's been posting more videos talking about Mania, I can't find them, but if it's true that he did, then that would track that he would know that's one of her personal weaknesses. I like enough, I don't think I, I don't think Ish is even there anymore. But after that Yana incident, I was I was done trying to get involved majorly with Maniac Studios or even with Mania's content after that. And I I I parted myself being somewhat bitter about that about that outcome and understanding where the guy was coming from in terms of the toxicity around maniac studios and also wanting to wanting to leave 
so but but then the way that he phrased his video at the time it seemed like it was all on good terms and everything that was until of course mania's video where it's made very clear that you know he's still trying to claim ownership he's doing the same thing that shiny did to me tried to exercise legal rights over mystic hills and write his own version i would just say do a fan version or change the characters names invent the world of your own accord so you don't have to rely on what existed already something along those lines but no i guess that's not what's viable but yeah i didn't i didn't know because i mean i just watched that video and thought this is this because of that guy it turns out it was and it's been going on for three years and he's gotten progressively worse and worse and now I find myself coming back to realizing what main, the position that Mania was in. Again, I've been doing Buttercorp now ever since and before this has even happened. And well, it was thanks to Mania, but also I, I get it. I've been through situations where people tried to claim ownership. I've had falling outs with people. They've tried to guilt me. There's a me is that Mania mentions about him sending a picture of a bullet and saying that many was the reason that he had that which is just the worst manipulation ever but i i, I digress and uh yeah it made me realize that you know i i parted from maynex studio well i mean i kind of stopped talking in maynex studios because of because of incidents that well because of people that are no longer there but also because the is the, the toxic environment that was there was not because of Mania. It, it, ne it never was. I never thought it was. I just thought that Mania wasn't doing anything about that. And people jumping to her defense was possibly just because she was more sensitive and that, if, uh, than I knew. And that's why everyone took mild criticism to the extreme. So, yeah. I ended up... I, I now wish that I could have actually been there. Okay, I just freed up a bit more space. Yeah, so just to conclude this video, again, if you want to make something of your own, and you make a show, and you want people on that, you own that show. You have the right to say no to ideas, and you keep the control. Don't, it doesn't matter if they get offended. If they get offended, that's their problem. They're the ones who need to grow up, not you. Uh, and also, Mania, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I, I didn't. I distanced myself three years ago, when clearly the people around you that you know have now parted ways ever since were part of the reason this was happening, and this has still been going on ever since, and that you've held on to this for three years despite the fact there were people who knew what was going on. There were. I, I, I knew what, what had happened. I was there. And yet, I thought it was resolved, so I said nothing. So, I'm saying something now. I'm sorry, and if you, if you want to talk about it privately or whatever, just, just drop a message. You might not watch this whole 45 minute video, but whatever. Just in case, I want, I, I, I'd love to talk about it now, if you still want me to. I have no right to ask that, but just in case. So please, if you like this video, subscribe to us already. And on that note, until next time.